Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to a very special edition of the show. We've got a superstar guest star here today, none other than the legendary frontman of Twisted Sister, Mr. D. Snyder. What's happening, D? How are you? Oh, you know what? I'm doing great, uh, Pete. It's really um, great to be here. And the uh, response so far to my new album has been pretty strong. Not putting you on the spot. If you didn't like it, be honest. But uh, but it's, uh, I'm finally starting to get feedback, you know, which is great. I actually like it quite a bit. Uh, I, you know, so everybody, just so everybody knows, the brand new album is called Leave a Scar. It's coming out very soon on Napalm Records. Napalm Records has been very busy of late. And uh, I think for you, a kind of a cool label to be on because, man, they are really working hard, putting out a lot of really cool new albums by a lot of veteran and newer bands. So uh, so how long have you been working on this album? I know we had the long coronavirus thing in between. You probably started it beforehand, I'm assuming. But No, actually, um, I quietly uh, dropped the mic and walked off stage and decided I was going to stop performing and recording uh, in 2019. Uh, it was successful for the love of metal. I just said, you know what? Um, I've returned to the metal fold. I've shown my value, my power. My album was top 20 in the States on the Billboard charts, crazy as that was. Um, number one metal album all around the world. They said, you know, this might be a good time to walk away. Cut to mid-2020, COVID, pandemic, the political unrest all over the world. And I'm suddenly like saying, I have got, I got to record. I've got, and, and I wanted to write songs I hadn't written since the nineties. So I contacted Jamie Josta, uh, who was my producer on For the Love of Metal and his team. And the first time, by the way, I've ever used the same production team for, subs for, for consecutive records. And uh, I said, dude, I want to do another record. And so we, that's when we started. Cool. Cool. Well, you got uh, 12 new tracks on the new album. Uh, it's a pretty heavy album. I mean, the last album was pretty, heavy too. This is pretty. Uh, it takes two people to lift an LP actually onto a turntable. <laughs> I mean, that's the definition of heavy. How many people did it take to lift the actual album? Talking old school here. Um, yeah, it's it's heavy and it's right where I wanted it to be. Yeah, and you got, uh, I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of really cool guitar riffing going on. Your vocals are nice and aggressive. I mean, it's like this mix of like kind of classic metal. It's almost thrashing spots. And then you got some really good shredding guitars between uh, Charlie uh, Belmore and Nick Petrino, who I think did a really spectacular job throughout the whole album. Uh, but, you know, again, a lot of different styles on the album. It's all metal, but it's a lot of different flavors. Did you purposely try and really mix it up quite a bit here? Yeah, we did. Um, you know, the toughest, the, the toughest place to stay is on the fence. Um, it's easy to go too far one way, too far the other way. And, uh, because of my legacy and, and because of the contemporary metal scene, which I love and embrace, I wanted a record that kind of reflected that love and would hopefully bring some of the, bring in newer fans, uh, and appeal to them and say, Hey, D Snyder has value in the contemporary scene, which was kind of proven with, for the love of metal. But I also don't want to leave behind all the older fans um there's some that are unsalvageable they're so stuck in the 80s you know like, i'm not going anywhere there's no good new music you know so like, okay soundtrack of your lives love you but but we're going forward we're staying young forever come with us um so uh, so i really want was trump but i'm trying to bring him along so it's a, it's a it's it really is a tough balance but uh, i i'm hopefully you know we didn't go too far either way and sort of and, and stayed on that fence kind of in between. Yeah, I struggle with that here all the time on the channel. It's like you have folks, I mean, I'm 55. So I think people when they hit like their 40s and onwards, they kind of stop trying to accept or reach out or experiment with new stuff. And they keep going back to what they grew up with, what they knew really well. And it can, it's frustrating for me as someone who's kind of a content provider here on YouTube, trying to talk about, you know, newer bands and music as well as the classic stuff. And it's gotta be, it's gotta drive you nuts too, as someone who participated in that for your whole career. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's um, very much a, hey, if it's not broken, don't fix it. These damn tunes have been working for me for centuries now, you know, like, okay. all right, grandpa. But, uh, it, it, <laughs> uh, but I've, you know, I've always kept my mind open and thanks. And really I got to thank my children 
because they're all metalheads. And through as they grew, they continued to keep me, expose me and, and, and bring me to shows and, and play music for me and keep me just connected. And I, I really am, a, Jamie Josta calls me OGD. Uh, I am a, a, a day one metalhead and I, I continue to love it. I support the community. And I think that we really need to be there for each other, whether we may not like every form of metal that's out there, but we, we are a family and we are a community and we're stronger for supportive of each other. So I really try to, to do just that. But unfortunately, um, a lot of the older people just lock it, you know, set it and forget it. You know, <laughs> they ain't changing. Yeah, that's just the way it is. But uh, so you you had the opportunity to work with uh, George Corpse Grander Fisher from Cannibal Corpse on this album, specifically the very brutal, very cool song Time to Choose. So uh, he was kind of a perfect fit for this song. So how did you guys wind up hooking up? That was my idea. I'm taking full credit. OGD <laughs> as J and, and it was a great moment in the studio. First of all, the song Time to Choose was originally uh, we had finished the album, 12 songs. And, it, and Napalm says, yeah, we need the bo a bonus track, you know, you know, the proverbial bonus track. Oh, yeah. So we said, all right. And we wrote Time to Choose and we're recording and it was really coming alive. And I had just done a vocal take and I was in between. It there. I said, hey, you know, it'd be great on this. George Fisher. And Jamie does the talk back. He goes, uh, are you George Corpse Grinder Fisher? <laughs> And I think he thought it must be another George Fisher. Dino is from like, Can't be that guy, he used to right? play with free back in the sixties, you know, not. And I was like, yeah, corpse grinder. Like, like, you know, what, what other George, but he just couldn't, but he says, and he goes, Oh, GD, man, you keep making it heavier and heavier. And I go, and I said, I think it'd be great. I could just hear him on here. He goes, D nobody does that. And I said, it does what? He goes, nobody from the heritage rockers, classic rockers, ever even acknowledges death metal if anything they look down on it it's not singing uh, and they're very disrespectful and, it, and and so as it turned out it was i was just thought you know I, I i respect what george does and i just thought it would be so cool on the track but it turns out to be like a grand gesture and it really plays into my thing about supporting each other and and recognizing is a community of metal whether you love it all or not supporting it all and i'm proud to be like one of the first people to reach across the aisle so to speak and and welcome uh, a singer like george on my record uh, jamie says that he was practically emotional when jamie asked him he said d snyder wants me like he's a fan of mine and, and you know he couldn't believe that i would want him on the track i just hope he reciprocates i would love to sing on a cannibal corpse track you know that do one of those pretty, melody parts yeah. like in a, a release a bridge or something you know that would be pretty cool very cool well you know it's uh be before i get to another kind of like guest star thing actually not on your album i do want to talk about a couple of the tracks that really stood out for me on the album uh i gotta rock again completely kicks ass i think it's the the a anthem of the album but it's still really really heavy and the other one is crying for your life which is kind of different because it's kind of atmospheric, kind of like doomy in spots. Uh, almost reminds me of like kind of like that uh, mid late seventies period Alice Cooper. Could you comment a little bit on both those tracks? For me, they really stood out quite a bit. Well, I love those, both those songs, and um, obviously I wouldn't put anything on the record I didn't love, but but they're they're actually high points. Um, I got a rock game was really sort of the inspiration for returning. It was just a, a, a moment, a, a silly thought I had. It wasn't even silly. It was just a statement. And my mind said, you know, mind to, I said, man, I got a rock again. And I said, boy, if that's ever, ever a D Snyder song title, that's it right there. Mr. I believe in rock and roll. You can't stop rock and roll. I want to rock. Ah, yada, yada, yada. Bad boys of rock. I once uh, was talking to some jam band guys and said, have you, not use the word rock because I used all the rocks up in the eighties. Is that why none of you guys use rock in your song? Um, but uh, so I wrote it down. I always work with song titles and it really was sort of like the starting point. Like I got to rock again and I can't be the only person who's thinking that in mid 2020, you know, as they told us every festival is being shut down again, yeah. you know, uh, I was like, I, I, you know, and it just sort of became like a battle cry. So, um, but I still wanted, I wanted it to be forceful, you know, at this point, I didn't want to come out of the, out just swinging. And, and that's really, we'll, we'll get to another song on the album later, but to me, I'm just, I'm just doing uh, body blows and, and punches to the head for like 11 tracks. And then I start talking to you at stand at the very end of the album. I go, okay, now that I have your attention, 
I'm just going to speak to you very calmly because it's important that you listen to me. So that was the first punch in the head. You're right from the first yeah. roaring, but it was like an animal in a cage. You know, we were all, we're all animals in cages at this time. Now crying for your life. Really? We were, well, you know, I, I, anything you hear and like, I'm a believer that whatever you hear, as long as you like it, we were going Dio. We were, we were listening to a lot of Dio and I was like, you know, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's, this is a Dio kind of inspired song. Even my vocal style, if you listen to it, I'm doing some Dio like screams on there and yells and the way he talks. Uh, but yeah, I, I, but it definitely, well, that song, it, it's a, that's an observational song. Uh, I really feel that the, that, that, well, it's not an art, but, but people taking responsibility for the, their choices is a lost ability. Uh, I don't know what, and I'm pointing here because it just seems that and I, uh, people, I'm not saying everybody. So if you're going, I don't do that. D, I, mean, I get you. But too many people in the generations that followed mine are quick to point to some, it wasn't my idea. I didn't mean, I didn't, it was my fault. I would excuses, excuses, excuses. You know, I, I, my, my wife's family are a family of criminals. Uh, mob people and they're this thing and it's a line in the song you do the crime you do the time yeah. you don't rat on somebody else you don't turn state's evidence to get a lesser sentence you go and do your time and you come out and then you do it again so and you commit another crime but um but you know that was just sort of like how i was raised you know no snitches you know snitches get stitches yet we seem to be in a, a world that a lot of people don't want to take responsibility for their actions. So that's what crying for your life is about. Cool. So, you know, you mentioned uh, Ronnie before, and ironically, it was just the anniversary or this is his birthday a couple days ago. Did you know him very well? Well enough, you know, we toured together and, uh, you know, certainly uh, at first as a fan and then became friends uh, and a wonderful, respectful, kind a uh, man with a voice that could pierce chain mail. He was about this big, full, full height. And uh, yet he opened that mouth of his and he could just like blow a hole in a tank with that thing. It was just amazing. Yeah, yeah, such a singer. So, uh, so I mentioned before about you guesting on an album that I wanted to mention. So uh, last year, a, a band, I'm sure our progressive fans know well who they are, uh, Arion, you, were on, you appeared on the album Transitus. And I spoke to uh, Ari and Anthony Lucas on uh, a couple months back, and we were talking about how exciting your vocal appearance was on that album. And for me, you are the highlight of that album. So how did, how did that all come to play? You know, I wasn't super familiar with them, uh, but I quickly learned and was educated. And like, it's one of those, what? You don't know. You know, and like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, and then you get, so you get, you know, like, but. And, uh, and when they asked me to join, and when I saw what they did and how they did it and the history of what he's done with a lot of guests and whatever, I felt flattered to be asked. Um, and I also knew he wanted D. Snyder. Um, you know, like, like, let's take, I'm involved with a project called Rock Me Amadeus Live. And I recently did a video where I sang Love Hurts. And in this mix of classical music and operatic music and Broadway and rock, um, they're not really looking for me to be D. They're looking for me to use my voice that I have and sing Love Hurts. I do cashmere. I sing some opera in this project. Uh, they don't, they want to show my range, but here he was like, no, no, man. I, 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 I wrote this song and I want D. I said, well, you got him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he, he, said, he said, be careful what you wish for, uh, because you're gonna have a tough time mixing it. Uh, everybody else's vocals are down here. And mine's like, oh shit, these yeah. voices like blowing up the microphone. So, uh, so it, was, it, it, it just turned out to be a very cool thing. And these are the great opportunities I have to do with something like Rock Me Amadeus or Rock of Ages on Broadway or this, this, this album here, you know, uh, something, you know, not normally what I do, uh, but to be a part of something different, it's, it's great. Yeah. So now that the, the new album is coming out um, and COVID restrictions are starting to lift, a lot of bands are making touring plans and all that kind of stuff. Do you have any desire to go out on the road at all? Or what's what's the kind of the plans for you going forward? I have had, well, first of all, I got a uh, live stream event happening at the end of this month on the 29th 
Um, I don't have the details with me right now with they haven't been formally announced, but it's going to be announced any day. And, uh, and that's pretty exciting playing a lot of new music uh, with my, with my solo band and there'll be some classics in there as well. So it might be a great opportunity for people to tune in, but I, 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 I sort of, I didn't promise myself, but I just said, I don't want to be a part of a non-traditional rock experience. I don't want to perform in front of a socially distanced crowd. That's not why I got in this business. And it's still very like, you know, Springsteen's uh, doing uh, on Broadway and he's doing it to a very sparse house. Meantime, Foo Fighters go to the garden, but they're fully uh, tested. Uh, it, it's, it's a mix. I, so I just, I, I think I'm going to sit it out until next year when the record is, is well ingrained in people's brains and I want to return to the festival season. I want to be a part of the return. I think it's going to be a real celebration when we get back to, to traditional concert going. And I want to sing, you can't stop rock and roll with meaning that I never thought it would have. When I wrote it, I was writing very, it had no idea there would be a pandemic that would literally stop rock and roll yeah. for a while. Yeah, but not forever. You can't so kill I wanna, it. I wanna be, you can't kill it. I want to be. I want to do that song. I want to be back. I want to be a part of that return in 2022. So you can expect to see me out there. That's good news. That's good news. Uh, so you know, you you kind of mentioned your old band there. So Twisted Sister, legendary name. Uh, you guys had a lot of success. And looking back on your career. Do you miss having the old gang back together? Obviously, we know, uh, you know, AJ is no longer with us. But um, do you miss like any of that at all? And do you feel like you accomplished everything that you kind of set out to do? I, I what the great, the greatest thing that came from reuniting was that we are friends again, and we talk all the time, and we communicate, and and we're pals, and. Uh, it was just not good that we ended as enemies in the eighties. Uh, and I really wanted to reconnect with my, with, with these, uh, you know, what we've been through together, you know, we, we, we've been through so much. So, and I also wanted to, I felt like in the eighties we broke up and people didn't even know we broke up. It was the band, the band that came in like a lion, this, the band that came in like a lion went out with a whimper and, uh, I just really didn't want it to end on that note. So when we did our farewell shows and we did them in front of 90,000, 50,000, 70,000 people all over the world, uh, they were glorious. There, there will be a live uh, concert um, DVD or whatever, they, whatever format they put it in these days. But whatever it is that's being assembled, um, it's taken a while because we, we've Filmed many shows and we, a lot of back behind the scenes stuff. Really, did we really said goodbye in a really uh, big way, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, and we're friends. And I assume we're getting offers. But JJ French, he manages the band now. Um, he never mentions them to us. He never brings it, runs it past anybody. He uh, because he knows that we're you know we're done. I've moved on. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do leave a scar with Twisted Sister. Um, technically, I could. But the first thing I say, that's not Twisted Sister. It, it's like a, such a catch-22 when you're a, a heritage band. They want you to sound, to be the band you were, but then when you are, they go, it's just the same old thing. It's like, well, well make up your mind. If we change, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. If you change, you're not being true to the band. If you're true to the band, you're not changing. It's like, you know, so I, I needed to try some things and do some things and I could do them in Twisted Sister. So, uh, so we, I don't see us getting back together. Oh, it sounds like you've had closure. I mean, you kind of ended on a good note and that's the important thing, right? Really did. Uh, really, really did. Like I said, we're friends and, um, and we talk all the time. And, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I shouldn't tell you this. When's, when's your show going to air? Uh, in a couple hours later tonight. Damn. Okay. Well, don't tell anybody. No, I can't tell you. I can't tell you, but, we may be getting together tomorrow on surprising somebody on a podcast um, uh, because uh, you know, and, and that's just what we, we do. We've done it before. Uh, sometimes we just have like zoom calls and we always talk and catch up because we're by we're all over the place now in different States and stuff. But uh, you know, like I said, yeah, closure 
is great and, and I feel good. I didn't feel That's good important. for 15 years. Uh, after the band broke up, I just never felt right about the way it ended, largely because it was my fault. Yeah. Largely because I knew I was the cause of the heartache and the problems. And I was the one who quit the band and walked away. And I felt, I felt responsible. And I'd grown, I'd matured, I'd changed. And I wanted the guys to know and at least enjoy the benefits of not having a complete asshole as a lead singer. So for those for those years we were together, let me tell you, man, Peter, they were they were gun shy for a few years. I, I was like, hey guys, what's up? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> like and then after like three years, they said, Oh no, he's really not that same fucked up idiot. Uh, uh, like so uh, so it took him a while to trust me. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Well, you know, I, I think you're all in a good place now, and that's that's the important thing. So yeah, cool. Well, I know we're running up on the half hour, so uh, before I let you go, I do want to mention. So you and I both have in common uh, the same like number one fan. So there's a guy out there named Nick Yusofian who loves D. Snyder and loves Sea of Tranquility. He's actually had you do some cameo stuff, you know, that where he sent to me, mentioning me, so on and so forth. So what do you got to say tonight to our number one fan, Nick Yusofian? Nick, I say this with all sincerity. You and people like you keep me going. I don't know about, about you, Peter, but, but it's this undying true belief and support that transcends the band I'm in and says, I'm with you on your journey. And, and cause it is a journey. And I get, I admit, Nick, I get a little wild once in a while. I shock people and they go, what the hell is he doing now? What is he all doing now? And, uh, but you know what? It, it, people like you, Nick, you just go, that's D man. You never know what to expect. Whatever he does, you know, he's going to give it everything he's freaking got. So I thank you. And everybody you. like you. <laughs> and I do want to say thanks to Nick as well. So uh, so there you have it, everybody. Spending some time with D. Snyder. Please make sure you go and check out Leave a Scar, which is going to be available on Napalm Records. What's the release date, uh, D? It's, like in a week. Uh, it's on the 30th. It's, uh, it's on uh, July 30th. And the 29th, there is going to be a live stream concert event. You want to look for that. There'll be information everywhere. Believe me, it'll be getting blown up. And if you want to find it, just uh, it should be being announced by the end of this week, the actual, so people can get tickets in advance and they'll know exactly where they can tune in for it. So, uh, yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's, I didn't think I was going to be back, but here I am. And as I say in the song, you know, it's not something that I choose. It's just what I got to do. That's right. That's I right. got to rock again. Part of your DNA, right? I, Steve Lucas told Apparently, me. Apparently, yeah. He said the same thing to me two weeks ago. It's like, you know what? This is what I do. This is my life, right? So I hear you. I, I, and there's worse things to be doing. I'm, I'm not complaining, people. It's just something that, for some reason, when I was in my 20s, I thought like you'd outgrow it. I thought, well, when, I'm, I, when I'm old, like 40, I'm sure I'll be over this. You know, you know, and I was like, you know, 50, 60, like, and I was talking to Alice Cooper and he goes, uh, and I said, and I said, Dude, I said, how long are you going to do this for? He goes, I don't know. I'm really looking forward to singing I'm 80. <laughs> I said, I'm 80. I said, I, I don't know if I can say it. I, I don't know if I'll be there with you, brother, but uh, but <laughs> you go, Alice. <laughs> yeah, I'm 80, and I like it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, we hope so. Uh, very cool. Dee, thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. Uh, check out Leave a Scar. Visit us on the web at www.seeatranquility.org. Check us out on Facebook, on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. For Dee Snyder, I am Pete Pardo. See you all later on. Take care. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to crowd surf away. Bye-bye. <laughs>